last time I was flying the Typhoon 2 and now it will be time to go towards the next missile battleship, the Bargest, or as I like to call this ship, the Space Pan. The Space Pan is still one of the most expensive ships that you can own. Currently these things are priced like a Dreadnought or a Carrier and for that price they do offer some very interesting stats and they are still performing really well. Just like the Ortus, the Bargest is very effective at ships above its weight class. Now uh, it will be time to take a look at the ship stats again. All Mordu ships have practically the same uh, raw bonus and that raw bonus is very good for PvP. Minus 50% missile torpedo flight time plus 200% missile torpedo flight velocity and 1 plus 1 warp scrambler strength plus 12.5% large missile torpedo damage, plus 5% large missile torpedo explosion velocity, plus 10% warp scramble range and plus 10% warp disruptor range. All of these skills are uh, very good PvP skills and Mordu ships are primarily PvP ships, but you can use them for storyline missions and encounters if you like. However, they are still going to be performing really well into PvP. And, well, in my case, uh, all of my Mordu ships are PvP ships. Ship has two drones, eight high slots, five medium slots, five low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. The Bargest is primarily a shield tank. Basically, all Mordu ships are shield tanks. In some rare occasions, you can make a armor tank Bargest or Ortus, if you like, but that works only if you have a logistic cruiser or if you have a armor guardian in your fleet. But if you are solo, then shield tank is the way to go. The capacitor on the space pan is actually really good. The capacitor on the Ortus is not. I remember I had a lot of issues with the capacitor with the Ortus, that's why I use a capacitor battery. Signature radius is, well, for its size it's actually quite small, but a little bit above average uh, for, the, for this ship if we compare it to the other battleships. And surprisingly, the space pen is actually not that slow. It's of course not the fastest, but at the same time it's definitely not the slowest faction battleship. It still is very slow if we compare it with the Nestor, which is going 3.5 km per second. Now, let's take a look at my build here. I have actually several builds for this ship. The first one is with cruise missiles. Now, cruise missiles, I love to use them on this ship because of the ridiculous flight velocity and, most importantly, because of the ridiculous range. 195 km cold range, 111 meters per second is the explosion velocity and the radius 197 meters, 19 km per second is the flight velocity of the cruise missiles, flight time 10 seconds, reload 10 seconds. The rapid missiles go 14 km per second, they have 113 meter per second explosion velocity, 83.76 meter is the explosion radius, 66.28 km is the range of the rapid missiles, flight time 4.67 seconds and reload 35 seconds. Overall, still really good stats and I have one missile guidance computer, I actually I'm starting to really enjoy using these modules of because of the extra range and because of the extra damage application. You can also slap one ballistic control and one capacitor battery. I really like to use capacitor batteries on the Mordu ships because it maintains the capacitor for a very long time and it allows me to last in a fight for a very long time. Now, uh, here we can take a look at the uh, rapid missile launcher stats with the ballistic control and this is the these are the stats on the cruise missiles with the ballistic control. I did lose around 17 kilometers with uh, swapping into a ballistic control but you get a little bonus on DPS currently sitting at 2.2 thousand which is still pretty good in the medium slots have dual points, one scrambler and dual webs. The scramblers and webs are primarily for defense, while you can use the long range points for tackling your target. 
While the webs and scrammers are pretty good at defending yourself against the interceptors, frigates, cruisers and everything else that can get close, you can also use the tracking and guidance disruptor on the Barghast, however that's not entirely necessary. And of course you can use dual neutralizers, very good defense against interceptors and other frigates, and of course including cruisers, dual large capacitor batteries, will make your capacitor last for a very long time. Overall I haven't, I haven't really used dual capacitor batteries on any Mordu ship, but it is a very interesting idea that can work and you don't have to worry about the capacitor of this ship at all. Now, Mordu ships are designed for long range to medium range combat, so the tank on these ships is not going to be very good by default, so a micro updrive and long range orbit is definitely the way to go on these ships. They fight by avoiding damage or they fight by shooting down the target before they take critical damage. The goal is to shoot down your target before you lose shield and in 90% of cases that's very easy to do with these ships. Mordor ships have insane alpha damage and they are really good at long range combat. Now uh, you can also use something very silly with dual computers and the range will be 195 km and will be very interesting to see uh, how much range I can get out of this ship and with rapids it's 66 km range you can easily uh, use rapids for basically everything that you like. Torpedoes on the other hand I would not use on the space pan because torpedoes require you, that require you to go a little bit closer to your target and the space pen is not a ship that is designed to take a lot of damage. The torpedoes have good damage, have good DPS, but they are kind of risky to use because you have to be really close to the target and that can be dangerous with a 22 billion isk ship. Now on to the rigs. As for the rigs, as you can see I went with a very similar setup as with the Typhoon 2. The current rig setup works uh, really well, however you can swap the current combat rigs into defensive integration rigs if you want to have some form of tank on the on the Barghast that works as well. I did have several fits, several active fits on the Ortus, one of them, actually two of them were tanky fits and they worked really well. In some cases I actually prefer to have more tank over more DPS on the Mordu ships. Well, um, this is another fit that I like to use, this is the more tank fit with dual lapis or dual shield boosters with one capacitor battery that should last long enough, especially if you maintain a good, good range from your target. Mordu ships are excellent counters to Blood Raider ships and the Barghast is practically one of the only battleship, <coughs> one of the only battleships that can take the Balagorn on a one v one, and because the, the space pen can easily orbit at 42, 45 kilometers from the from the Balagorn, and the Balagorn will not be able to defend itself against this ship that easily. Now. Let's take uh, a look at the active stats. This is the more tank build with dual adapters, 2000 cold DPS. With dual adapters, the resistance should be okay. Again, the primary hole that you have to cover is the EM and thermal hole. And if you like, you can easily uh, make the resistance on the ship look pretty good. So, um, Am I going to be flying this ship as a DPS or as a tanky space pen? I haven't decided that just yet. I think first I will go with this build that I currently have here and then I will try out different ideas. That's a very massive signature radius by the way. And the ship is going almost 1.5 kilometers per second. 
that is still decently fast for a battleship. It is a little bit slower than the Typhoon, but a little bit faster than the Makaryo. Now, I have the ballistic control here, and of course, they have changed the cooldown, so the cooldown is now 135 seconds. It used to be 60 seconds, so you have to be using those modules very wisely now. Okay, let's take a look at the um, active, active ship. 2.5 thousand DPS, that's okay, I'm very happy with that DPS. Now the range is going to be... Oh, okay, looks like the... The computer does not count when it's active, so I have to reactivate the the guidance computer to see the active missile range. But still, 195 km cold range is ridiculous. I mean, it's really ridiculous. Uh, I can technically make that 250 to 300 km. So, uh, yeah, the space pen is indeed interesting in terms of the range that it can shoot from. 288 km is the active range with the guidance computer, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And the other stats are also looking really well, really nice. The explosion velocity and the explosion radius also are very nice for cruise missiles. Now let's take a look at the rapid missile launchers. Again, this is going to be the same build from before, just with rapid missiles. 2.4 thousand DPS, almost 100 DPS difference between the rapids and cruise missiles. 97 km, 98 km is the rapid missile launcher range. That's kind of scary, not gonna lie. 62.46 meter is the explosion radius, 131 meter per second is the explosion velocity, 14 km per second is the flight velocity. No ship will run away from Mordu ship missiles. Activation time 4.69 seconds at 97.99 kilometers. So technically you can fire two two volleys of missiles at your target before the tracking computer before the guidance computer goes down. That's enough to shoot down a interceptor at 100 kilometers. And Docking yeah, request accepted. Uh, that's, that's something that is going to be important if you want to run low sack missions or overall null sack missions or you know stuff like that that can be kind of risky well then um, i guess it will be time to take the space pin out and let's see what this flat ship can do you know at first it was kind of weird to fly something that's this flat because it kind of looked weird on the screen but with time i actually got used to to these exotic ships. The mortal ships have some of the nicest hull designs, if you ask me. Something about... Something about these ships is really... Really satisfying. Not quite sure what's the... What's the exact thing. Okay, well, uh, let's shoot at the first target. You can definitely see how quick those missiles are flying. If you remember, back when I was flying the Typhoon 2, it took some time for the missiles to actually reach the target. With the space pen, even at this extreme range, the missiles are are going very quickly. It takes around 9 seconds to reach the target at the optimal distance, and that is impressive. It takes twice as long, or even three times as long with the Typhoon because of the slower missile velocity. Now, uh, I'll be doing some manual flying here with the cruise missiles and then I will be swapping to the rapid missiles. So far, I think when I use this ship for PvP I will most likely use the cruise missiles and the thing is Mortal ships, like I said before, mortal ships are good at shooting targets above their weight class. That means the Garmor can easily shoot down destroyers and cruisers. Orotrus can easily shoot down battle cruisers and battleships. And the space pen can easily fight with carriers and dreadnoughts. 
because of the extreme damage, extreme alpha damage that these things can do, and because of the extreme range that they can shoot from, you will be doing full damage to a dreadnought or a carrier. And when I say full damage, you can expect around 25 to 75,000 damage per hit on a dreadnought or carrier. If the dreadnought has target painters on them, then you can expect damage close to 75,000. And that is impressive. This thing does the same thing to dreadnoughts and carriers that the Ortus does to battlecruisers and battleships. And I think most of you already have seen what I did with the Ortus. That thing shoots down a battlecruiser in 3 to 4 hits. And it can fight with battleships easily. Sometimes when the battleship is very tanky the fight can take some time. But the average battleship goes down in 10 to 15 hits. So the Ortus does definitely prove the point. Now for the space pen, well, we don't have a lot of carriers and dreadnoughts running around in low sec. So uh, that will leave me uh, no other choice but to shoot down dreadnoughts and carriers in null sack systems. And of course, we are in such a position that we can easily find dreadnoughts or carriers if we want to, so the space pen will definitely, definitely get some dreadnought action very soon. Can't wait for that actually. Now, the main enemy of Mordu ships are drones. And the, the Garmor and the Ortus definitely prove that point really well. From all of my fights in the Ortus, the one and only weapon type that did cause me problems were drones. And I had to walk away from a couple fights with prophecies, a couple fights with other drone boat battleships. And I remember having to walk away from a Nestor that I was trying to catch. That Nestor was using my, my build. That build makes the Nestor go 3.2 km per second. So technically, the Nestor is fast, very fast. At the time, my Ortus was going 3.1 km per second or 3.2 km per second. So our speeds did match and I was not able to approach the Nestor. The Nestor dropped the drones and, well, Nestor drones have teeth, so I had to warp away from, from that ship. So yeah, if you are flying the space pan, drones might be a problem and be careful around drone boats. A, a rattlesnake might not be a problem because a rattlesnake is slow and the large drones are slow. But other drone boats might be a threat. So if you are flying this ship, make sure to be careful around drone boats. Now, some things that I don't like about the Barghest. First off, I don't like its price. It's still ridiculously expensive. And if you take this out in low sec and if you get scanned, you can expect a whole alliance to jump on you. So, flying the space pen in low sec is kinda not recommended. Flying the space pen in null is something that's in this case safer because in null you have full control over anything and everything. You don't have to worry about anyone jumping in your system because if they do jump, you have you have time to warp away on uh, on a decent time frame. Now, am I going to use this in low sec? Oh yes, I will. I know, I'm, I'm actually breaking my own rules that I set with a lot of ships, because it just happens, I guess. I forget about my own rules and... and I just go like that, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be flying this in low sec, because why not? Uh, the Mordor ships are actually the best hunters in, in the game. The bonus on points 
and scramblers and of course missiles make them perfect for engaging targets running missions in uh, in that aspect not many targets escaped from the Ortus. like i said only those those drone boats were a real threat anything else wasn't that much of a uh, of a big problem I'm orbiting that Omnix at 192 kilometers. I actually forgot about the ridiculous range on this. And nice, the second wave was cleared. Now let's take out the rapid missiles. I changed my build to take one large capacitor battery in order to maintain the capacitor because I'll be orbiting at 55 kilometers. That's a little bit close, but still the space pen can easily take some hits. I was asked if the afterburner is a good option on mortal ships. I wouldn't go with a afterburner on the Orthos or space pen. And that's because afterburner is good if you if your ship has tank and uh, if your ship is designed to uh, fight at a medium to close range. Now mortal ships are by default not very tanky. You can give them resistance and you can technically make them tanky. However, their tank is not going to be that good. Uh, it will definitely last for a fight, but. If the fight is too long, then your capacitor will run down and then you might be in trouble. So the best option on these ships is to use a mic warp drive and to orbit at long range. That's the way how I have been using the Ortus, that's the way how I have been using this ship. And to date it worked really well, you're practically orbiting outside of anyone's point or scrambler range, you're orbiting outside of anyone's web range, you have full control over the field and over the grid while flying the ships with the micro drift. And if you are worried about interceptors or other fast ships getting close to you, that's where the long range scrambler works because you can turn off the micro drift of any ship at 21 km. If they eventually do get close to you, then you have dual webs to make the target stop and then you can easily shoot down the tackling cruiser or frigate or interceptor. You don't have to worry about a interceptor orbiting you at let's say 60 kilometers because with one missile guidance computer you can easily shoot down a interceptor in one or two hits. It works the same way as with the Typhoon 2. The only difference is the Typhoon 2 has a little bit better damage application or in some cases if you look at the, at the stats a much better damage application. But the Space Pen has higher alpha damage and overall higher DPS. So that kind of compensates for the lower damage application. It is still more than enough to shoot down a, a interceptor that's orbiting at 50 or 60 kilometers. These ships are hard to tackle and you need a tanky tackle in order to tackle a Mordu battleship. Even the tanky Mordu, even the tanky tackle cruiser or frigate that goes to tackle this ship will have a very hard time to keep the ship because again the alpha damage of these things is kind of crazy they're doing ridiculous damage to to anything and of course uh, i would say that they are quite balanced in that aspect because their tank is a little bit weaker not to say that the tank on these on these ships is non-existent, because in some cases it actually is, but uh, they're definitely not the tankiest ships that you fly, that you can fly. And of course, not a ship that you want to fly in a very close fight, because a good trap and 
these ships go down. The Ortus is the excellent example for that. The Ortus, one mistake, and you you will lose the ship practically because that's how that's how easy to kill these ships is. That also can be said about the space pen. However, the space pen is a battleship, so it has a little bit more shield, armor, and hull. That that kind of helps. Well, uh, this Dominic slowly going down. Now, I'm not not quite sure if they changed the graphics a little bit, but for some reason the effects look a little bit better than before. It might be just me, however. Not entirely sure, but I think they made the effects look a little bit better. Couple more missiles and this Dominic's... Well, that was nice. Okay. So, uh, what do I think of the space pan? Well, I actually really like this ship. And like I said before, I'll definitely fly this into PvP at one point. Currently flying the Hyperion a little bit. And after the, after the Hyperion, uh, it will most likely be the Typhoon 2. And after the Typhoon 2, maybe the Space Pen. Depends on what I decide to do. But I'll, I'll definitely have a lot of time to decide uh, on that. So, uh, is the Space Pen good? Yes, it is. Did the balance patch make the space pen better? Well, it did, but the space pen was already good before the patch. I haven't had any problems with the ship before the patch. And after the patch, the space pen became a little bit better, and I think a lot of players uh, would definitely love to hear that. So if you want to fly the space pen, I have I will say 100% I would recommend this ship. So if you want to fight the space pen, only if you... Well, with that being said, hope that you enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.